Hello, all my fellow network engineers out there on the internet. Welcome to our vlog series, Demystifying Ansible for Cisco ACI. I'm your host for this series, James Kaiser, and we will be talking about automating workflows today. Uh, I thought before we get into the next video which that I want to do, which is going to be about pulling information out of your APIC for use in other tasks, I thought I would do a quick demonstration on what that might look like before we get into all the nitty gritty details. Now, what I've done is I've created this playbook that's going to automate a workflow for me. Uh, all these tasks, if I wanted to do what I'm about to do, I would have to do all of these tasks manually one at a time. Or I could just write an Ansible playbook to do it for me. So while I demonstrate that, I'm going to be talking about what this play, kind of how this playbook is work from, works from a high level and then show you what the output comes will look like. And then in the next video that I do, we'll kind of dig in a little bit to see what exactly is happening under the hood to do all this. So I'm going to go ahead and run this playbook and have my finder window open over here so I can show you that there are there's no HTML file beforehand. So I'm going to let this whole thing run as is, unedited, and you'll see it just pop up and then we're going to go take a look at it. I'm going to use a somewhat public um, A pickup in the cloud. And these are just options I have in my playbook here. So while this runs, uh, what this playbook is going to do is something along the lines of programmatically uh, cleaning out a working directory folder. And I know it's best practice to do things in memory, but just work with me here. The latency incurred from disk writing is negligible. We're going to generate a certificate with OpenSSL. We're going to create a user on the APIC using an API call. We're going to assign our generated certificate with the newly created user for use in all the remaining tasks. We will query the APIC a whole lot of times to get all the information we want out of it. These requests involve the utilization of JSON queries with James path filtering to parse out all the necessary data. We're going to utilizing Jinja 2 templating. The return data will be used to generate markdown tables of all the return values. Also using Jinja 2 templating, CSS files, HTML files, and group header information in the form of a markdown table are also generated. All the images are created by converting PNG or JPEG images into their base 64 string version and assigning that string as a variable. Now that part is not completely automagic because I need to get the image first before I can use it. This playbook is themable, so the idea is to pick a color in hex, add your base 64 image string, and then those values get loaded in the playbook when you execute it. So you need that information first so that we can dictate what images are going to go where, or we can just use, you know, and have one YAML file that gets loaded. After all the tables are generated, they're then sorted and combined, and then using Pandoc, a flat HTML file is generated. After that, the playbook will remove the user and cert from the APIC, It'll delete the working directory, which in turn will delete the keys, search, and other files that were generated, leaving only a single HTML file documenting your fabric. Now, how big your fabric is will determine how long that's going to take. If you have a very big fabric, that's a lot of information that could be that could take a little bit. Generally, not too long. Um, this playbook takes about a couple minutes, uh, I, no more than five tops. And uh, I'm just going to let it finish here. It should be almost done. And there we are. Clean up and we're done. So I'm going to now run the report. And this is what it looks like. Now this file you can navigate through. Uh, if you want to check out pod policies, we'll click pod policies. We're already at the top. We have our BGP route reflector information. ISIS domain policies, NTP. I just queried all of this APIC and gen, uh, information from the APIC and generated it here. Tenant policies look like this. Here's our APs. We have bridge domains, consume contracts, endpoint groups. All of this information was just queried and then generated into this document right here now. Um, now this APIC doesn't have any VMM policies, but you would see that here if they if it had it. Multipod, no multipod for this, but here's my favorite section, the hardware and health, because I can pull critical major, critical and major faults, 
query endpoints. I can get information about the APIC, the firmware, the firmware running on the switches, the inventory hardware information, what model number, the serial numbers, the node numbers, LLDP neighbor information. And, and if this had a route table, because this is a simulated fabric, uh, I would have your entire route table to include the overlays, the BGPs, underlays, whatever IGP you might be running, you, everything. And it gets big it, and it can be long. So this is just one example of how I automate a workflow in the end. When I'm done doing something with my fabric and I want to get all this information and document it, I just kick that off. I let it run. And there I have my HTML file. And this has saved me in a pinch. I've gone back, you know, into old HTML files that were generated to uh, look, at, look at the data. And what else is nice about this is you can select all, copy, paste it, and put it in an Excel spreadsheet if you'd like. It pastes in nicely. So be sure to tune in next time to check out the next video because we're going to go into the get requests and we're going to look at the API, the API response that comes in from the APIC and look at, look at what we're dealing with. We're not going to go too much into the Jinja template. We're just going to look at the response that comes in from our get request. So thanks for watching and uh, tune in next time.